Welcome to April's Leaco Challenge. Today's problem is global and local inversions. We have some permutation A of 0, 1 through n minus 1, where n is the length of A. So basically, we have a permutation of numbers between 0 to n minus 1. It's going to be reordered in some way, but each one of these numbers are going to be distinct. Now, the number, number of global inversions is the number where i is less than j, and a of i is greater than a of j. So here with this example, we can see that 1 has one global inversion because it's greater than 0. But if we had like other numbers less than that afterwards, those would also be global inversions. The number of local inversions, however, is where a of i is greater than a of i plus 1. So here we can see that 1 is the only global inversion because it's greater than 0. And that's the same as the local inversion because they're right next to each other. Here we can see there's going to be two, two global inversions. 1 is greater than 0 and 2 is greater than 0, but the only local inversion here is this, 2 is greater than 0, but 1 is not greater than 2. Now, big hint, where can we place the 0 for an ideal permutation? What about the 1? All that means is if we had want to have minimize the number of inversions, it would just be in order. If you'd be in sending, so sending order 0, 1, 2, there are no inversions, right? Okay, so the first approach I thought was finding the number of local inversions is pretty trivial. We can do that in O of n time, just looking at the previous number to see if it's greater um, or not than this index number. If it is, we can just add a 1 there. But what about global inversions? That's a lot trickier, right? So if we had, I don't know, um, say 3, 2, 0, 1, uh, we can see that this is the ideal permutation we know at 3, this has 3 global inversions, right? Because um, there's 3 is the greatest number, and we know there's 3 numbers below that. Here we can see at 2, there's going to be 2, 0, there's going to be none, and 1, there'll be none as well, because that's the last. But to find global inversions is a little bit tricky. You can't do it in O of n time, uh, because while we're going through, we basically have to remember all the different numbers that, that we already already seen. So we need to rephrase this problem here. Uh, rather than thinking about, oh, how do we count up the global inversions, really the question is, uh, return true if global inversions and local inversions are the same, right? And to kind of figure that out, what we would do essentially is use this number here and just check to see if the difference between the two is greater than one or not. See, with three, we know that um, we can't have a number bigger than one Otherwise, it's going to have more global inversions. Same with here. Uh, with 1, we can see the difference is 1. Um, that would mean this could have more than one global inversion. And like if these were flipped, say this was, mm, I don't know, like 1 here. Uh, same thing here with 1, 0. Uh, we know that uh, if this was greater, than, like here we know it's only one inversion. But if it was greater, say it was something like, I'm kind of messing this up here, but if the difference was like two, like this, then we would actually know, well, uh, we've probably seen another number less than this. So this actually could not be a local inversion. So basically what we have to do is move through here and check the difference between the index number and, and the i, the ideal position. And if the difference, really the absolute difference is greater than one, we know that there's more than one global inversion. So I'll show you what I mean. What we can do is just initialize the length of a and say for i in range of n at any point if the absolute value of i minus a minus i is greater than 1, then we can immediately return a false because there's more than one global inversion then. Otherwise, if we can get through this whole thing, that means the number of global inversions and local inversions are the same. So this would really be it. This would be O of n time and actually use um, O of n sp or constant space. And there we go, accepted. Now I realize this solution is very simple, um, which surprised me, but I definitely was not easy to come up with um, because the first approach I, I was trying to do was find the number of global inversions. So only when I did some research and finally figured out, yeah, we need to think more about what the problem is asking here. We don't care how many global inversions are. We just want to know if the number of global and local are the same. And once you realize that, you can kind of play around with the arrays and realize uh, the difference between the i and 
the number itself can't be greater than one or else there's more than one global inversion. Okay. All right. Hope that helps. I don't know why these questions are so hard this month. I guess they're really pushing us, but hey, it's better than just getting easy problems all the time and not improving. So thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.